Mr. Chairman and members of the subcommittee, I am pleased and honored to appear before you today on behalf of Public Service Enterprise Group, or PSEG, as I will refer to ourselves. PSEG distributes electricity and natural gas to more than 2 million customers in New Jersey and owns and operates approximately 16,000 megawatts of electric generating capacity in eight states. Our generating fleet includes about 2,400 megawatts of coal-fired capacity and almost 3,500 megawatts of nuclear capacity. We believe that global climate change represents a real environmental threat and a significant business challenge, but we also view it as an opportunity. We support mandatory greenhouse gas reductions on a national level and a cap-and-trade mechanism to achieve the necessary reductions. I have confidence that our nation has the intellectual capital and innovative spirit with which, with which to meet the climate change challenge. Numerous options already exist for reducing our emissions. These options include end-use efficiency, supply-side efficiency, renewable energy technologies, nuclear energy, and a wide range of greenhouse gas offsets. Many technologies within these categories can be implemented now, and the pace of technology development and deployment will pick up dramatically when the United States reduces regulatory uncertainty, adequately incents innovation, and establishes a market price for carbon. As noted, we believe that national climate change policy should be structured around a cap-and-trade mechanism that will deliver meaningful reductions at a reasonable cost. Our view is based on considerable experience with other cap-and-trade programs that have been successful in reducing emissions of sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide. A key question is how to best structure a national cap-and-trade program and establish a CO2 market that will efficiently spur investment in new, low, and zero-carbon technologies. This will require that we improve upon the existing models. Under the Acid Rain Program, for example, virtually all SO2 allowances were distributed at no cost to power plant operators on the basis of historic emissions. Some would advocate that we continue this approach in a CO2 cap-and-trade program. We disagree. This grandfathering approach, as it is commonly known, rewards technologies with lower efficiency and higher emission rates while providing no incentives for investment in new clean technologies. We support a performance-based approach, also known as an updating output-based allocation. Under this system, allowances would be distributed based on a facility's recent electricity output measured in kilowatt hours. New facilities like IGCC and ultra-supercritical coal-fired plants would be entitled to compete for allowances with existing plants. Companies would have an incentive to improve the efficiency of their existing plants and the economics of investing in clean coal and new nuclear would be improved. Another alternative could entail the auctioning of allowances instead of distributing them. Proceeds from an auction could be used for, for a variety of public benefits, including consumer rebates, research and development, and energy efficiency credits or reduced taxes. And many economists agree that an auction is the most efficient and transparent method for distributing allowances. We believe that existing coal-fired power plants continue to be an important energy resource in the United States. Therefore, we think it makes sense to limit the auction of allowances in the early years of the program. We support auctioning 25 percent of the allowances at the outset of a national cap-and-trade program and transitioning to a full 100 percent allowance auction system over a 10-year period. It also will be critical to include emissions offsets both as a cost control measure and a source of innovative compliance solutions. These measures can include methane capture from coal mines and landfills and other options as well. A robust offset program can reduce the cost of a cap and trade program. Mr. Chairman and members of the subcommittee, on behalf of PSEG, I thank you for the opportunity to offer these comments, and I will be pleased to respond to your questions later. Thank you very much.